Uh, welcome to your new Jaguar I-PACE. Today I'm going to run through some of the essential features and functions of your new car to help get you up and running. To start with, you unlock and lock the car using either the buttons on the key or by pressing these buttons on the door handles with the key on your person. The charge port for the car is on the front left wing and is unlocked with the central locking for the car. To charge the car, simply insert the charging lead into the top part of the socket. The light next to the socket will illuminate green to indicate the car is successfully charging. To release the charging cable, press the unlock button on the key. You will hear the cable unlock and then it can simply be pulled out. The second part of the socket is for public rapid charging at a CCS rapid charger that you'd find somewhere like the motorway services. Uh, to reveal the combined socket, you pull out the bottom bung there. That gives you a CCS charging connector. All our cars are supplied as standard with a three pin charging lead you can use to charge your car from any domestic main socket instead of or until you get a home charge point installed. This cable you will find in the boot of the car when it is delivered to you. Now we'll move into the car. Once seated, you can adjust your seats on both the driver and passenger side by using the switches at the side of the seat. The iPACE has a memory seat function on both the driver and passenger side uh, where you can store the seat positions for different drivers. To store your seat position once you have it set, press the M button and then the number on which you want it stored below. Uh, the iPACE is what's known as a proximity key, which just needs to be present in the car for you to be able to turn the car on. To start the car, apply the foot brake and then press the start-stop button to the left of the steering wheel. Ready is displayed on the right-hand side of the dash screen to indicate the car is on and ready to drive. Uh, the car is now started but it remains in park so it isn't going anywhere quite yet. To put the car in gear, apply the foot brake and press either the R button for reverse or the D button for drive. The switches will illuminate to show which gear you are in and this is also displayed on the dash on the left-hand side of the screen. The iPACE has an electronic handbrake which will automatically disengage when you touch the throttle. To reapply the handbrake, press this button to the right of the steering wheel. The wipers are controlled using the traditional stalk on the right hand side of the steering wheel. Front screen washer is activated by pulling the stalk towards you. The left stalk is indicators and headlights. I suggest you set them to auto. The button at the end of the stalk changes this info display at the bottom of the dash screen. Included here is your trip computer, which is reset by holding the button whilst the trip screen is displayed. Your adaptive cruise control functions are on the right hand side of the steering wheel. You push the switch up to activate it and then use the same switch to adjust your cruising speed up or down. The buttons either side enables you to set the distance you like to keep between you and the vehicle in front. You might for example have a shorter gap in slower moving traffic. The button at the bottom right is to activate or deactivate your lane assistant function. When the steering wheel at the very bottom left of the dash screen is illuminated green, it means the car is able to steer for you as well as being able to follow the traffic in adaptive cruise mode. This is a driver assistance function as opposed to an autonomous driving system, so please be sure to keep your hands on the steering wheel. The left hand buttons are your media controls and also your voice activation and phone controls. The heating system is controlled by the touch screen and the dials below the infotainment screen. To activate the heated and cooled seats, you push the dials in and turn accordingly. You pull out to adjust the dual zone climate controls. There are various other climate control settings that are accessible via the touch screen between the dials. Click on the airflow icon top right to set it to auto. This touch screen can also be used to display media and phone information. Your heated steering wheel control is on the steering wheel. The two drive mode buttons allow you to adjust the, the driving mode of the car depending on how zippy you like the car to be against how far you like its range to be. You have an eco, comfort and dynamic mode, which is like a sports mode for faster, edgier driving. There is also a snow and ice mode for slippery conditions. The infotainment system is a touchscreen. If you press a widget, it takes that item, such as sat-nav, to full screen. You can also swipe left and right to bring up the different menus. I'll now quickly go through some of the important menu functions that I think might be helpful to get you started with the car. If you swipe to the left, it brings up the My EV screen. In here, under EV Setup, is where you set whether you want the car to creep like a traditional automatic car, and how high you like to set the car's regen braking. Both of these are key things, I think, to set straight away. Um, depending on whether you want the car to creep or not is purely down to personal preference. With regards to regen braking, I prefer the higher setting. That way the car will slow itself automatically when you uh, take your foot off the throttle. The car needs to be in park before you can change these two settings, so be sure to set them straight away before you set off. Vehicle preconditioning is on the right side of this screen. In here you can program the car to warm itself up before you head off for work in the morning for example. 
To set this up, you set your relevant departure time and then the days for it to activate. Telephone brings up the phone menu, and if you haven't got your phone connected to the car yet, you can do it here. If you are connected, it will bring up this screen where you can dial or access your numbers. To pair your phone, click this icon here and then pair. Media brings up your audio media screen, where you can select where you want to pair your media from. Uh, navigation, this brings up the sat-nav. This icon brings up the navigation menu where you can program in a destination. You can set your home and other favourites in the Your Destination section. If you swipe to the right, there are a variety of menus for you to explore. And this is where you can set up the car for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Moving on to the icons at the bottom of the screen, as well as being other ways to access the sat-nav, media, phone, Bluetooth connections, you also have buttons to bring up your 360 degree camera system, if your car has it a button to turn off your beepers, and then a button to activate your park assist function if you have a self-parking mode on your car. The gear icons brings up your settings menu. You can change lots of things in here, such as the audio sound settings and general settings such as time and date. I'd definitely spend a bit of time with your car, scrolling through the various menus and pressing all the different buttons just to familiarise yourself with everything. Once you've concluded your drive, press the park button and then the start-stop button to turn the car off. I hope this short video has been helpful in getting you started with your new Jaguar I-Pace. If you need any further assistance or have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch as we're always on hand and happy to help all our customers. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your new car.